I'm on. Hello. And welcome. Let's see if I can make sure we are showing up here. And I'll probably post a link if I can find one. So let me see. It says I'm live. So if you can see me out there, let me know. I'll try to find this and repost it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there it is. Beverly, thank you. Good to see you. If you can hear me, please let me know. Let me just know that um, that this is going to be a good audio experience for you. Just write me a comment. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sounds like we're good to go. And I'm just going to get things situated here. This won't be a long transmission, but I do want to cover a sweeping broad subject and then bring some ideas home for anybody that wants to do some self-study and to arm yourself with truth so that you can enjoy this experience here every single day in the perfect day that the Lord hath created. And you can not just say it with um, vain repetition, but you'll feel it in your heart. And that's what my aim for you tonight is that you will be able to grasp a hold of some things. And I'm going to give you some um, techniques that are somewhat new and you're going to be able to use them. And I think you're going to appreciate it. So let's see if I can pop this in the screen here. And we'll see if I can make it look. Yeah, so it's going to be lined up. All right, so I got Beverly here. Is anybody else here? Anybody else going to join tonight? Everybody's probably busy, um, I suppose, with all of the wonderful things going on. So, all right, well, I'm going to get right to it. And if nobody joins, that's okay, too, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> because the truth is irresistible, and it will find whoever wants it. So the ego is going to be dethroned. That's the big idea. And we're going to demonstrate God's mighty power. And then it says this way to exit the matrix of dreaming. So I am suggesting that if you are experiencing any sort of discord, that you're dreaming, you're dreaming in error. And this is nothing new. This has been happening for eons. This is the ascent you know, the ascension out of the material five sense dream. So the, uh, the big idea here is you were never born in flesh. If you believe in Christ and you say that you're a follower of Christ, then you cannot identify as being a flesh mortal. It just doesn't work. All right. And that's where all of the challenges come in when people are praying for a healing and they're looking for a prosperity they're looking to get something that doesn't belong to the person they're trying to get it for. In other words, you want to gather up healing or treasure or harmony to something that God is condemning, okay, in sin. You see, mortality is flesh and bone and blood and identification with that. And it's even true according to Romans 8. Paul discovered this. In, you know, he taught it eloquently. If you identify as a decrepit mortal, then you don't get the blessing. In fact, there's no reason for you to pray from that position because you're operating from a less than stance to begin with. So what I'm going to show you, welcome Rashan, is I'm going to show you what you can do and show you some very simple things that you can apply immediately. So the benefit of staying till the end here is that you'll be able to grab a logic key. I've put together three of them. And with this knowledge, you can unlock what I call the forbidden secrets of the gospel. Now, they're forbidden because the ones who have discovered these, they always get ridiculed. They always get ostracized. They Sometimes they get murdered. Sometimes they just you know, don't have an audience because the human mind is insane. And most people are identifying as one with the human mind. And so you see the collective, the collective matrix 
all of the lies, deception, confusion, and all of the erring fallacies that you see happening with your five senses, that is the cosmic soup of the shadow of ignorance that forgot God. All right. And that's what you see. And it doesn't even stop at the doors of the church. It goes into the church and it infiltrates what they call the church as well. So you have churches following the same agenda that the mainstream is following. You have all of this stuff happening and people are wondering, what can we do? Well, the good news is you only have to deal with your personal relationship with God. Your personal thought is where the magic happens. So my journey is what led me here to this place where I'm at today. I had to become a scholar or die on many occasions. In fact, my life was, you know, one miracle after another. I was, um, you know, born two and a half months early and the doctor said I had no chance to live. I couldn't breathe. All right. What a meme, huh? It's coming back around again today, right? So my lungs were not developed. So they had to take me away from my mom and put me in the incubator or whatever you call that thing. And I wasn't able to see anybody. So my first experience in this world was in isolation, uh, quarantined in an incubator and I couldn't breathe. So this is not new to me, all this stuff that's going around. And, you know, lo and behold, I did survive. And then the, at the age of two, my mom and dad, my biological dad, were still together at that time. And driving on a highway, I guess, at 55 miles, miles an hour plus, I was in the front seat with my mom. And a uh, drunk driver hit my my dad in his car head on, on the highway. So I, my dad, long story short, everybody got kind of got messed up a bit. My dad had to have a steel rod put in his leg. My mom had to have her face completely rebuilt. And my mom held me through the whole experience going through the windshield, head on collision on the highway. And I broke every bone in my body apparently as a two-year-old. And <laughs> you see, this wasn't an easy experience from the get-go, all right? This is kind of like my path here. And then, you know, obviously lots of trauma. I had several head concussions, four of them to be uh, precise. Depression when I was a teenager. I wrote about it all in my book, all these things in my my, the series of books, but the latest one, Trust, the Most Powerful Force in the Universe. I'll talk about that in a moment. I recommend reading it because it is the culmination of everything you're going to hear today in a nutshell, but I'm going to give you the fleshing out of it, if you will. And also the workshop is free where I teach you all the techniques that I learned to gain mastery over these experiences and to demonstrate what I call the Word of God, Okay, to walk in it, not to think about it and to pray about it, but actually walk in it. So along the way, I had to deal with anorexia and bulimia from age 19, age 25. I discovered a glimpse of this power that I'm going to talk about throughout all of these experiences. And every time I experienced a glimpse of it, I was set free. I was instantly set free from whatever was going on. For instance, the teenage depression, I was on the hill and I'd go up there for months on end and I'd have a fit and throw my bike. And I discovered a glimpse. I heard the audible voice of God and it says, say I am. And it told me what to say. And I, I literally heard the voice in my head and I started saying it. And all of a sudden I changed my whole life. And I wrote about it in chapter one of the book, Trust. That book and that chapter right there can change your entire life because I discovered a principle. I discovered the I am presence within. I had a direct contact with it. Then, you know, anorexia and bulimia, I had a fleeting moment in the stillness, in the gap between thoughts, contemplating the perfection of God. I wasn't contemplating my illness. I was contemplating the perfection of God and I was set free. I had a change of consciousness and the next day it was completely gone. It never came back. Now that's what they call a miracle. And it's what is standard. It's commonplace. It's something you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be walking in the miraculous. You're not supposed to be walking as a downtrodden, decrepit mortal, as a slave to the uh, pharmacia system. This is not you. This world that they have painted over your lying five senses and your deceitful eyes is not the world that God created. The world that God created is wholly and entirely separate from the material dream, and it is perfect, and it is harmonious, what they call heaven. That's why the Messiah, Yahushua, said heaven is at hand. It's at hand. You're not going to get to heaven. You're in heaven. That's what I'm telling you. You never left. We'll talk more about that and how you can demonstrate it. So stay to the end because I'm going to show you how to demonstrate it. 
So then I had PTSD and agoraphobia because I didn't know it, but that's what they called the onset of what I had uh, been be uh, bedridden and bankrupt with was Lyme disease. I lost all my muscle, couldn't walk, and I had some serious, serious problems with that. That was like going through uh, graduate school, if you will, in the school of spiritual hard knocks. And that's when I was turned on to the work of Phineas Parker's Quimby. And I started to really study in and hone in on this guy that uh, healed over 10,000 people with a conversation. Everybody from the lame to, you know, you name it, people with everything, you know, the, he had what they called um, consumption, okay, which is you drown in your own fluids. And, you know, he had a shift of consciousness and he healed himself and he realized that this physical thing is really not physical at all. And that man is the expression of his belief. Okay. So going through all that completely set free from that, I train like a pro athlete today, uh, better at age 44 than I was at 20. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's insane. The levels that I train today, it's, it's absolutely impossible considering where I came from, but that's what God specializes in is the impossible. And one of the things I heard Jesse Duplantis say that I really want to drive home is one time he said, if it's not impossible, God's probably not in it. You see, God wants to do for you what you can't do for you. So God can show you that you're not it. It's really not about you. It's about him. It's about the father, mother, God. So a lot of things happened along the way. I had mystical experiences. I've seen shapeshifters with my own eyes. I was involved in the occult. I had some very high level experiences with some high level people for a season. And I've been down the rabbit hole so deep. And, you know, coming from this place where I was at eight years old, I had a death experience when I drowned. Okay. And my mind picked up in a simultaneous track and it gave me a story, a narrative. So I could put together how I'm still here, even though it's logically not possible. You know, then when I was young, I also drank a cup of laundry detergent and my mom said, you know, I woke up in the ER blacked out and, uh, it's perfectly fine. I just perfectly fine. I just walked away, you know, so I've had a lot of things happen, but one of the most significant things is that I had a prophetic word at the age of 26, 26 or 27, right before Sabrina and I got married. And this little sweet lady, she was in her seventies and, you know, the church was packed and she was given these prophetic words. And I remember going up there and she called me up and she told me, she said, listen, she said, you are going to go through some very hard times. She goes, but I want you to know that God said he will be with you and he will never forsake you. And then she said to me, you are a modern day Paul. She goes, you're like a motivational speaker, but not a hype. She goes, you're going to teach what God says is true. And that's your destiny. And I thought, well, okay, she's mistaken because I got plans and they don't involve that. And she doesn't already know. I've already been through some things because at the time I'd already been through so much, but she was absolutely on point because right after that is when I went through the suffering with the, you know, PTSD, agoraphobia, Lyme, and all those things. And when I received the Christ, okay, when I invited Christ into my heart, I had a very mystical experience as well. I felt like an electricity shock come right through me. It shot me back into my chair and I tried to wrap my mind around it for years and I could not comprehend it logically because it made absolutely no sense until, you know, as of maybe the last few years, uh, when I started really understanding that wholly separate from what you hear, smell, see, taste, and touch, there's a completely different realm that you never left. That is the true abode. That is the real man that God created. All right. So we're going to get into some things and bring it all together. There you can see, there's me, 2009, 165 pounds, my bones popping out everywhere. You could see my ribs and all every bone. And I was, you know, about dead by then. Couldn't walk very far, maybe around the block at most. And my reason to live was right there. That was my first, um, you know, child, my son. And I was, you know, so inspired to keep living because I wanted to show him strength. And you can see fast forward. That's me just a couple of years ago. You know, when I first started training like a pro athlete, doing three workouts a day back then, I think I was at like 7% body fat, you know, squatting 500 pounds, benching 350 plus pounds. 
um, you know, doing things that I didn't even think I could do. And that's post being bedridden with Lyme disease and barely able to walk and nobody thinking I could ever do it again. It wasn't because of me. It was because of God. And then I ended up, you know, building companies out of being bankrupt. And I ended up in this place right here um, on Blau Road, 11680 Blau Road in Spring Green, five and a half million dollar mansion built out. And when I first got to Spring Green, we were living in a house that had bugs in it. OK, because we had bottomed out. And I was doing really poorly, as you saw in the picture. And when I started to really conceptualize what God was, and I started to turn into some of the techniques, in fact, the techniques that I teach for free in the new book, Trust the Most Powerful Force in the Universe, I teach you all the techniques that I was doing. I was able to, in a couple of short years, go from bedridden and bankrupt to living in this place with a seven-figure income, doing something I absolutely loved, living a rock star lifestyle. And I didn't even know how I got there. In fact, it doesn't matter because God put me there. So there's the five and a half million dollar mansion that I lived in. Uh, everything from an indoor movie theater with the seats and rows and the curtains and everything to you name it, it had it. It's all there. And then I started realizing what really mattered. And I had a fallout because I got a little bit arrogant at that point. I thought that I was doing it. And so I got humbled again by God. And then I realized what is really important? And I started to turn to the spiritual life. And that's when I got real and I got serious about being passionate about leaving a legacy. I moved from getting everything to figuring out how I could leave the legacy of whatever I discovered that happened to me so many times when I was like, no chance. And then all of a sudden God showed himself strong. How can I do that? And how can I show people how to do that? And I started with the book, Allow Mastering the, the Law of Least Effort to Receive Your Desires. And that was basically the recap of how I went from bedridden and bankrupt to, you know, what I just showed you, training like a pro athlete and, you know, doing all the prosperity stuff that I had, you know, dreamed of and then some. And then I got into Ask Until It's Given. I was exploring more deeper. And then the, the true pinnacle of my work that has come through from you know, just turning to God is in the book Trust because it really comes down to trust. If there's one thing I can tell you that you're going to want to learn is you're going to want to learn how to trust. And you know, fortunately, God gave me Sabrina, and Sabrina really taught me the secret of how to trust. That is something that was ingrained in her for her whole life. She came in with that gift in this world. So I invite you to explore this work if you haven't done so already. You can get the book on Amazon for a few bucks uh, for free if you got the Amazon account or buy the hardback cover and keep it in your library. That's what I always do. And you get the free course with it. The link is in the book and you can take all the training modules and there are some perks and bonuses in there. And you will ultimately learn all these techniques and be able to master them. These are the skills. See, these skills are what it boils down to. These are the components of what I call spiritual mastery in application. ABC break process, safe touch technique, and self-entrainment technique. Okay, we used to teach those in our workshops. We started with workshops and we had such a great time and then, you know, the world changed and then we don't do that anymore. So I decided, you know what I'll do? I'll just find a way where I can teach everybody this stuff and just give it to them. If they like this work, they should have this material. And so you can see here's one of our workshops and we got to meet, you know, amazing people. And these are some of the, you know, highlights of my adult life right here. Just meeting just amazing people. So without further ado, let's get on to the three universal logic keys that I want to give you tonight. I want to give you some wisdom and some components of how to apply the same thing that Phineas Parker's Quimby was getting close to, okay? But he ultimately showed the demonstration to Mary Baker Eddy, uh, who founded Christian Science, and she mastered it, okay? I don't care what anybody says about Mary Baker Eddy because she really mastered it. She walked in it, and she demonstrated the miracles, and she discovered the science of Christian healing. Now, the tongue that was used in those days, in the, you know, the 1800s, is not that digestible to the mind of modern times. The mind of modern times is ultimately spiritually retarded and adulterated, okay? The people have been dumbed down so much, the mortal mind, not the true God's people, 
But the mind of mortals is a darkened cloud of ignorance, if I'd have to sum it up in a few words. So we can break through that and we can bust through that because nothing can obstruct the truth and the truth is irresistible. So we're going to talk about three different keys, one for well-being, one for finances, and one for relationships. Now, here's the good news. The gospel is simple. The gospel is so simple. Okay, it is the truth itself that sets you free. It's not your background. It's not how many times that you prayed last week. It's not who you know. It's none of those things. It's knowing the truth, leaning on it, and trusting it. And if you can do those things, and you can subdue the one thing that puts everybody into bondage, which is fear, and that's trusting what you hear, smell, see, taste, and touch. If you can subdue that even for a moment and allow for a little crack for truth to come into your picture, it will start to adjust everything for you and you will witness the falling away of a fear or compulsion. It will no longer appear in your circumstances. It'll fall away like an arrow in the midst of flight because you will not give it the wings to fly anymore. So we're going to use the following components. These are things I discovered in the Gnostic Gospels and, you know, the you know traditional Bible, King James Version, New International Version, everything I could get my hands on, pseudepigrapha, apocryphon, and spending a lot of time in meditative contemplation of God. You know, when you contemplate something, you become it. So if you contemplate wisdom, wisdom starts to take over your life. And I discovered that this thing of the whole armor of God is almost like a process that you can use. And we can go back to first principle thinking. This was the biggest thing that Mary Baker Eddy discovered. See, Mary Baker Eddy discovered a way of thinking, which is called retroductive logic by some of the greatest minds that ever lived. And it is all but forgotten today, okay? But it's what leads you into what, is called the scientific prayer. In other words, knowing that your prayer works and not hoping that it works. So here's a mental concept of what the armor of God is. All right. So you can see here, you got the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, and the feet protected by the gospel. And that's in Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 17. So just one second, I'm going to have a little drink here to keep my, my throat going good, and then I'm going to break it down for you. So if you read the scripture, the order that things go in is it begins with the belt of truth, and then it goes to the breastplate of righteousness, then the shoes of the gospel of peace, then the shield of faith, then the helmet of salvation, and then the sword of the spirit. So do me a favor and just close your eyes and let's go through that sequence because I think it's important. Okay. Now just imagine yourself putting on a belt of truth. Okay. Just get that sequence going. Now imagine yourself coming into a breast plate. Okay. Right in the center where your heart's at of righteousness. And I'll explain all this to you in a minute. Now just go down your shoes, put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. Now put the shield in your hand, the shield of faith. Now put on a helmet of salvation. Now grab the sword of the spirit. So that sequence here, let's talk about how to apply it. The belt of truth means let's put on a first principle idea. In other words, what we're doing is when we go into, let's say a haystack and we're looking for a needle, most people would say, okay, let's just start sorting. Instead, with first principle, what we do is we burn away the haystack. See, once you find the first principle, first principle thinking, it just burns away all of the other debris that doesn't belong because you've already obsoleted it. You've already negated it. It's the process of negation. Now, the breastplate of righteousness means, it means being one with the idea that God created his man, woman, etc., to live in his image and likeness. 
And righteousness means goodness. So God's law that's forever in operation that cannot be obstructed or inhibited or in pause mode, it just never stops, is eternal goodness. So when you identify as the mirror reflection of that goodness, that's what sustains your life, you've put on the breastplate of righteousness. So the shoes of the gospel of peace, you know, rest in peace, they put it in plain sight. They show you that you have to die to go to heaven, right? You have to be dead to the material form and alive in spiritual consciousness. You have to stop thinking that you were ever born of a mother father, that you ever aged, that you ever had a heart, lungs, bone, brain, kneecap, feet, all of this crap that they lied to you and told you belonged to you were never true. It's mesmerism. It's an illusion. It's falsehood. See, heaven's here now. You die to the idea that you were ever separate from God's perfection, which is a spiritual fact, and it can never be interfered with by anything material. The shield of faith means that you're resting in God's ideas. Faith means trust. To trust means you take your dog out of the fight. It's not your fight. You rest to receive. That's what allowing is. A helmet of salvation means you are in the beingness of image and likeness of God, spirit, immutable, life itself. It's God living, not you. You don't turn to yourself. You turn away from self and turn to God. That's the helmet of salvation. You're coming from perfection. You're coming from a healing. You're coming from prosperity. You're not trying to get there. That's falsehood. That's how man thinks on the earth. Man's trying to get something. God's man has already been given and simply reflects it. So the sword of the spirit is when you assert the facts of life in the appearance of whatever is problem, problematic or troubling you. So now let's add some logic to that. And let's go ahead and break this down so you can apply it and transform your consciousness because everything happens in consciousness. So we're going to use a logic key, very similar to how computers work, because that computer brain of yours can function best when you use logic. So we're going to do it while we put the armor on. And our logic key looks like this, a series of commands. If, and, then, because, and, therefore, the fact is. Right? So if something, and also that something, well, then, something, because, something, and, therefore, it's a fact. That's how your mind works best when you're correcting the mind. So let's give it a scientific prayer. And I think first we're going to deal with finances. So before we do that, I want to show you what Mary Baker Eddy wrote in her book, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, page 468, 9 through 15. This is one of the most famous of all statements in Christian science is it's the scientific statement of being. Look at her words here. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God. And man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Now, within that scientific statement of being, when you look closely, you'll understand it's almost like a logic patch. And therefore, it uses first principle thinking. See, Mary Baker Eddy was a first principle thinker. She was one of the most astute intellectuals of her time. And when she had a mystical healing experience, when she opened the Bible and the Bible ministered to her and she was given the bread of life and she got up and she walked after they said she would never be healed in seconds, she went to work for years contemplating all of this material, all of this truth. And this is her, one of her best summations of it in a paragraph 
And if you look at it, it's a first principle idea. God is all. That's first principle. Well, guess what? It burns away everything else, doesn't it? If God is all, well, then where is anything unlike God, like evil or matter or sin? Doesn't exist. It's unreal. Yeah, that's the truth. So here's the correlative scripture. 1 John 3, verse 1 through 3. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Son means descendant, by the way. Therefore the world knoweth us not. You get that? The world knoweth us not. Because it knew him not. Because they look through human eyes. They can't see the truth. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, descendants of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. See, we are reflecting God's spiritual perfection eternally in his heaven, his abode. That's the true man of God. For we shall see him as he is. See, we don't see God as an angry man in the sky with a beard. That's heresy. That's a satanic fictional version of truth. It's a wooden statue. It's an idol. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Now, do you see there, it says, if you have this hope, which means trust, it means if you trust in this, and a trust is a contract, it's a legal contract, it's a performance. It means that if I put down my dog in the fight and I turn away from myself and say, well, God, you're all there is. There is no sickness in you. I believe everything you said. I trust. And you turn to God. It says it will purify you even as God is pure because you will be the reflection of God and it will cast out whatever is problematic. So Mary Baker Eddy wasn't the first to teach from this consciousness. So in just a moment, after I get another sip here, I'm going to show you something that goes even further back. Now, the Gospel of Thomas, it's one of those, you know, forbidden Gospels that they just ever so cleverly removed because they don't want you knowing this stuff because guess what? It negates all of the bondage that has kept mortals in their human reasoning captive. You see, that's where you're held. That's the prison. It's in your human reasoning that you believe that you live in their world and that you identify with something they created, which is a material person. So in the book of Thomas, one of the things Jesus says is, I am the knowledge of truth. So we know that this appearingly material thing showed up and people saw him because he, you know, God showed up so people could see the son of God. He says, I am the knowledge of truth. Okay, that's important here. Now it says here, the Savior said, all bodies, okay, now this is material flesh, have come into being in the same irrational way that animals are produced. And so they are visible as creatures lusting after creatures. Are you a creature or are you a spiritual idea? You have to make that decision because it's going to govern everything that comes into your experience. It says also, now whatever is subject to change will perish and be lost. Oh, like your body because you were born and then you die. It's complete bullshit. You were never born and you never die. It's a dream. It's an illusion. It's sin. It's the pagan sorcery that is lying to you. Now it says here, and henceforth has no hope of life. If you identify as flesh, if you even think that you have a heart, brain, blood, blood, bones, lung, lymph nodes, fingernails, feet, all this stuff, if you even think that way, it says you have no hope of life, none whatsoever, because God never created that person. That is a mortal. That is not the image and likeness of God. That's the image and likeness of Satan. That is ignorance of the Father. Now, it says, because this body is an animal body, just as animal bodies perish, 
so also will these figures perish. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, it says here also, blessings on the wise person who has sought truth and when it has been found has rested. You get that? That's the shield of faith. Okay, that's where we're going to go. Rest is receiving. Rested upon it forever and has not been afraid of those who wish to trouble him. So what the Messiah is saying is that blessings will come to you. Wise person means the man of God who contemplates perfection because you couldn't exist outside of God. And therefore, if you're not of God, you don't exist. And if you are of God, then nothing else can come in the picture because God doesn't see anything other than its own perfection when it looks at you and thinks of you and you're held in the mind of God. So when you rest on that idea and it says not be afraid because fear is the first step to sin, that's the biggest one. Doesn't matter how bad that body hurts of yours. Doesn't matter what it looks like on the surface. It says if you rest upon the principle that you exist in the mind of God, you are made whole and perfect because God is perfect. And you live, move, and have your being in God, in spirit, not matter. And you refuse to be afraid. It says blessings will come to you. Now, the Savior also said to tell the truth, do not think of these as human beings, but as animals. See, if you identify, if people go around identifying as mortals, you know, covering themselves and injecting themselves with all kinds of crap and doing everything that they have to do to sub subdue their fears. Those are animals. Those are animals. I know the gospel isn't the easiest thing to digest for some people that can't accept it. But you were never born in flesh. You never existed outside of God's perfect spiritual awareness of himself, Father, Mother, God. So how the hell did you come into flesh? You never did. But if you identify as that, then you have turned away as the prodigal son. You have put yourself into bondage. You are in sorcery because you're not resting on the principle and you stepped into fear. So as animal, animals devour each other, so also people like this devour each other. They are deprived of the kingdom. They love the delight of fire and are slaves of death and rush to deeds of corruption. They fulfill their parents' desire. Well, doesn't that look like the outer right now? Then it goes on to say, their body, their hearts turning to themselves. Get this. Their hearts are turning to themselves, their own wicked imaginations. And their thoughts being on their affairs. See, instead of contemplating what's going wrong in your life, when you contemplate what's perfect about God that never changed, that can't change, that's immutable, that's eternal, divine love, that never knew anything unlike itself, that's the antidote. But not these, not these ones. Their hearts turn to themselves. And their thoughts being on their affairs. And then it tells you what's going to happen to them. This is what's going to happen to them. Fire will consume them. Fire will consume them. Do you want that to happen? Well, then listen. Listen to what the gospel has to say. Because it goes on to say, shame on you who hope in the flesh and in the prison that will perish. How long will you sleep and think that what is imperishable will also perish? You see, you're a dream state of the Adam consciousness. Adam fell asleep in the material five senses, believing he was flesh. That's sleep. That's perishable. But God is imperishable. Your hope is based on the world, and your God is this present life. You are destroying your souls. 
You can be set free in one moment when you catch a glimpse of this truth. How? By contemplating it. I'm going to give you keys at the end. I'm going to show you. It says you are in darkness and death. Well, welcome to the material world. Darkness and death. It's all around you. It says you have surrendered your freedom to slavery. You have darkened your hearts. You have given into foolishness. And you have filled your minds with the smoke of the fire within. The cloud of ignorance and the torment of the human reasoning. Turning to yourself. Not God. And your light has been hidden by the dark cloud. You love the garment, the physical body. To believe you have a physical body. Now look at the footnote. It says the garment being worn is the body which can be put on or taken off like an article of clothing. You choose. The power is in your thought. I don't have a physical body. I live, move, and have my being in God because God said so. I'm spiritual, not physical. I was never born in flesh. And people would, on the earth would say, I'm crazy. And yet they're going to burn in fire. So how crazy is crazy? You see, the garment that you wear, although it is filthy, and you are gripped by non-existent hope. You see, Jesus didn't have a good message for these people. This wasn't blessings on you, for your father knows that you identify as being immortal, and that's okay. No, it said you're going to burn in fire. It's not going to go well until you recognize there is no other. You're breaking the commandment, have no other gods. Now, it says blessings on you. Blessings on you who understand beforehand temptations and flee from things that are alien. Like thoughts of having heart, brain, blood, lungs, toes, fingers, hair, skin. That's alien to you because it's not something God gave you. It's in your thought. You identify with physical flesh in your thought, and it has been going on so long that you think that that thought is you. It's not your thought, and it's not your body. In fact, it doesn't even exist. It's unreal. It's a dream. Blessings on you who are mocked. Ah. I can promise you that I've been mocked a million times, and guess what? Blessings have been on me, too. I've walked away from things they said I'd never walk away from. I've prospered in circumstances that they said could never happen. And I've outprospered them all when it mattered. And are not respected because of your master's love for you. You see, if God loves me, then I don't care what animals have to say about it. Jesus called them animals. He said, think of them as animals. Blessings on you who weep and are oppressed by those who have no hope, for you will be released from all bondage. You see, that means to love for the sake of love. You see, it means love for the sake of love, because then you're expressing the will of God, because God is love. You're not acknowledging what they're doing out there. You're loving for the sake of love. It says, watch and pray that you may not come to be in the flesh. That happens in your thought. But that you may leave the bondage of the bitterness of this life. And you can do that right now. And when you pray, you will find rest. For you have left pain and reproach behind. When you leave the pains and the passions of the body, you will receive rest from the good one. You will reign with the king, you united with him, and he with you, from now on and forever. Amen. Do you see what Jesus is saying? Do you see, what, do you see what's being implied there? Is that something you think is going to happen, like, when you die? 
It's going to happen whenever you choose it's going to happen because you were never put into captivity other than your own thought. So what did Paul say? Now, this was on my sales desk, by the way. My whole life has been a, a training, and I see it for what it is, school. You know, it's a school, spiritual school. And this is right after I received a word of God, and it, it was the most mystical experience. But this was staring at me on my desk for about a year straight. Okay, I shared a desk with a woman named Julie, and she was a Christian woman, and she had this was her favorite scripture on her desk. Now, this is more relevant to me now than ever because this is the season I'm in right now. So if you are doing this right now, pat yourself on the back. And if you're not doing it, well, this is where you're falling short. Meditate on these things. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. If there is any virtue and there is anything praiseworthy, Remember I talked about praise is the congregation of all of the fruits of the Spirit in an attitude towards life that you occupy that brings God's favor upon your life. It says meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Did it tell you to go online and sign a petition and to uh, riot in the streets or to, you know, go start a fight or to do any of that stuff or to even think about that stuff? Did it tell you to even think about that? No, it didn't at all. It said to contemplate God to the point where nothing but praise is coming out of you. And then the God of peace will be with you. You know what's great about the God of peace? It says in Exodus 14, 14, that if you hold your peace, God will fight your battles. Interesting, huh? And you know the one thing you can do to destroy all of your enemies is actually to just love because love chastens more than you could even dream of. Love is the greatest revenge. Love is the greatest revenge. If you want to really put your enemies in check, then let nothing but love come out of you and God will take up your battle. <clears throat> now, this is what came in my audible prophetic dream. Okay. I was sitting there half asleep at like four in the morning or something in our condo when Serena and I first got engaged and the Bible opened up in my dream. It was like the heavens opened up. The Bible came out and I saw Romans 8.10. Now, at the time, I was just beginning my downward plight when I had to suffer with all that Lyme disease and really, really go through some hard times. And it was like God was equipping me before the school began. It's like God said, uh, yeah, you're going to go to spiritual boot camp and um, here's your scripture. And I heard this in my head again. It was another one of those experiences and said, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I freaked out because I thought it meant literally that I would be non-existent because that's what people think if the body is dead, the material body is dead, that you don't exist anymore. But it actually doesn't mean that at all. It means that if you identify with a material body, you are dead because spirit is where all life is contained because of the goodness of God. And God doesn't allow the sins of the flesh to come into God's reflection. So it took me over a decade to actually be able to tell you that from this level of awareness, because now I know what the scripture means because I've lived it. It means be the image and likeness of God, be the image and likeness of God. So the logic keys to hold steadfast for your victory, I'm going to give you three of them and you can repeat this video whenever you want. And what you do is you put on the armor of God with the first principle thinking, and you do the scientific prayer all in one solution here. It seems ultimately too simple, but in reality, what has to happen inside of you is a complete abandonment of self 
to reflect God. Just like it said in the Gospel of Thomas, just like Mary Baker Eddy discovered. And to do that, you're going to have to subdue fear at every turn. That's where the real work has to happen. If you can subdue fear, if you can subdue fear, you will witness instant transformation. To the degree that you hold on to fear is the degree the transformation is postponed. It's all between you and you. So for financial freedom, we use the if, and, then, because, and therefore it is a fact, logic, patch, okay? And we use the armor of God, and here's how it works. Think about anything financial that's troubling you right now, and maybe take a screenshot of this because I used some very powerful truths in here, and it's the truth that sets you free. It's not who you know, what you know, where you go. It's truth itself and resting on it. So put on the belt of truth. Here's the belt of truth about your finances. God's governance of man's supply, manifest of God himself, is the only activity in operation. That means there are no other competing minds, by the way. And put on the breastplate of righteousness. That means to reflect spiritual goodness. Goodness is the only activity here. God is all, and God gives all. According to our faith and trust, there are no other minds. There's only one mind, which means there's only one action. There's only one governance. Now, put on the shoes of the gospel of peace, and I have one universal truth for every one of these, how to bring yourself back into peace. I am absolutely not concerned because I know wonderful things are happening because God is all in all. That is one thing you can do with everything that seems to come to mind that tries to sweep you away in fear. Remember? I said if you could subdue fear, you could pull this off. This is the most powerful way to subdue fear. I am absolutely not concerned because I know wonderful things are happening because God is all in all. Now put the shield of faith in place. I reflect God's supply. As I open my hand, God opens his, which means you're a free flowing conduit of good. Therefore, divine love fills all of your needs, always has, always will. Now put on the helmet of salvation. I am the wealth, the opulence, the substance already perfected in my world of every constructive thing that I could conceive of or desire. Now let's go for the, therefore it is a fact, the sword of the spirit. It is a fact. I am as rich as my father, mother, God, because I live, move, and have my being in God, and it's his supply that I reflect. And as I open my hand, and good flows from me, good comes to me, divine love takes care of all of my needs, therefore I'm absolutely not concerned what happens because wonderful things are happening because God's all in all, and it is God's governance of man's supply that's the only activity in operation, and God gives all. According to our faith and trust, there are no other minds. Boom. <clears throat> you see, I just corrected the mind in my personal thought. That's all you are required to do. You are having a personal relationship with the Father in a simulation. The outer realm is considered an empty dead carcass in the Gospels, the Gnostic Gospel of Truth. You are dealing with nothingness that appears to be real because it's material, and God never created anything material. So you're having a personal relationship with God, and it's in your heart. And therefore, a logic patch like this corrects your mind, and as you do, you can come back into that position of praising the Father where blessings are guaranteed. Now, this will lead you into what is known as be still and know that I am God. Now, let's do one for well-being, the belt of truth. Well, first principle idea, 
Man reflects God's spiritual qualities of well-being. The breastplate of righteousness. So if God, okay, if man manifest reflects God's spiritual qualities of well-being and the breastplate of righteousness, man as a reflection is not capable of falling out of perfect alignment. Just imagine God looking in the mirror at God. Well, if you're the manifest of God, which means manifest, like a ship manifest, means God's carrying you on board. Get it? It's in plain sight. Man means manifest. Manifest of a ship means what's carried on board. If God's carrying you on board in his substance, in his spiritual reflection, then you're not capable of falling out of perfect alignment. Well, then I'm absolutely not concerned because I know wonderful things are happening because God is all in all. Peace, the shoes of peace. Well, because, shield of faith, God never created disease or suffered injury or accident. So no mistake could ever take place. Did God fall out of reflection of himself? No. Ever? Ever? No, never, never. Helmet of salvation. I live, move, and have my being in God's spiritual reflection. So therefore, it's a fact, sort of the spirit, that my body is a spiritual idea. My mind is God's omniscience, one mind. And man is as safe as God. Now what I do is I anchor and I harbor to that truth, and I refuse to be moved. And I put the burden on God to cast out anything that is unlike God. And that's when you'll see miracles happen. Because you're reflecting on truth. Just like Jesus said in the Gospel of Thomas. Go back and watch this again. This is not theory. This is scientific prayer. Let me take a drink and I'll finish up here. <clears throat> harmonious relationships. If, and then, because, and therefore it is a fact. So belt of truth. If God is forever relating to his substance, only goodness and love, that's God's substance. God is relating to God. There is no mortal. There is no you and them and everybody else. There's only God. And God is relating to his own substance, goodness and love. That's all there is. Breastplate of righteousness. Well, then I reflect on gratitude and praise. Well, wouldn't you be grateful and have praise if that good and love was all there was? Well, I'm here to tell you that that's all there is. So it's your attitude that fell out of alignment. So we're correcting that. Well, then, shoes of the gospel of peace, I'm absolutely not concerned because I know wonderful things are happening because God is all in all. Shield of faith. Because only God's governance within all his creation ever takes place. It's God's omni-activity that's taking place. And helmet of salvation. The expression of love is the only truth. It's the only reality of life. Everything else is unreal. It's an illusion. So therefore, it's a fact, sort of the spirit, that nothing evil or harmful, including any discord or wrong behavior, exists. All is God's omni-action. Now, you might think you're bat crazy by holding true to these thoughts in the appearance of what seems to be all hell breaking loose. But I'm here to tell you that if you do, you will witness God clear away the smoke that it talked about in the Gospel of Thomas, the cloud in the fire that was consuming their minds. That's what your human discord is in the outer. It's the fire in a cloud of ignorance. So we need to go to first principle and rest on a principle, truth, a fact, and reflect what is 
correct in the mind of God with gratitude and praise. And let God be God and every material man a liar. Just like the Bible says, animals. And you will be set free because you're in the world, but you're not of it. Their world is not your world. You never left heaven. And the biggest lie of them all is that your personal thought is a lesser mind than God's. That's the biggest lie. Your personal thought is not a lesser mind than God's because there is only God's mind. So here are some pro tips to overcome the obstacles. You convert everything that seems to be happening into a thought form. You spiritualize it in your mind. For example, when I had to heal myself of that horrible thing they told me was wrong with the chest and all the pain and all this and that, and they tried to put the fear of Satan in me, I had to spiritualize that idea and know that that's a thought. It's not God's thought. It's an illusion. It's error. It's unreal because there is no heart. There is no bone. There is no blood. The heart means affection towards. Everything real is counterfeited in the material. I don't identify as material. Otherwise, I'm a counterfeit of God's man. And if I'm a counterfeit of God's man, then I'm cursed from the beginning. Ab initio, from the start, cursed. If I'm, if I'm God's reflection, then that never changed. I never fell from grace. I never sinned. I never suffered injury. I've always been held in divine love's perfect idea. See how that works? So you allow the truth, first principle, God is all in all, to adjust your outer circumstances by burning away all of the apparent discord after you spiritualize it as thoughts and realizing that those are not the thoughts God is thinking, therefore they don't exist. And you hold steadfast to the right idea. Righteous means goodness. And you let the change in your personal thought be witness to God's mighty power. And I'd recommend get a prayer partner and pray in this way. Use the scientific prayer. It makes no use whatsoever to identify as a flesh bone mortal and try to solve a problem from a problem consciousness. You can't get there from there. That's how 99.9% .9 of prayer is done on the planet. Why would you do that? That is hoping for something that already happened. You were already set free. You're the child of God. You're not trying to get there. You're already there. You're just burning away everything that doesn't belong. Consuming matter within thyself, like the Gnostic Gospels say. And you have to refuse to fear because fear delays the demonstration. Okay? So use these logic keys. Check out my website, MatthewDavidHurtado.com and get more information if you'd like and stay plugged in. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. So let me go back. And um, let's see how long. We didn't take that long. So let's see how long we got here. Can't even tell. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. And I want to let you guys just, you know, do with, do with it what you will. And I know this stuff works because I've demonstrated it time and time again for years and years and years. Not just in health, not just in finances, not just in relationships, but in all of them. And it's something you'll have to keep demonstrating. So you have to have the skills to do it. So the more you do it, the better you get. Because you're subduing fear and you're devouring matter within yourself. And you're rising out of the dream. And that's the journey. And that's what's really happening. All right. God bless. And I'll see you next time.